Digital night vision has come a long way in the past few years and has now established itself as a very viable option for those of you looking for budget night vision capabilities. And a lot of you guys have been asking how a modern budget digital night vision setup competes against analog night vision. So today in this video, we're gonna put analog and digital night vision head to head by comparing the MVG50 against a Gen 3 PVS14. The MVG50 was designed to be an upgrade to the MVG30 and is a leading $500 digital night vision monocular. And this is a Gen 3 Lbit commercial spec thin filmed white phosphor PVS 14 I picked up from Steel Industries and the price paid was a little under $3,500 with shipping and the MVG 50 can be picked up for about $495 with the 10% discount code US 10 from my affiliated website Goodnight Gear and this includes a mount so the PVS 14 is nearly seven times as expensive as the MVG 50. The plan in this video is to show you how these two devices stack up side by side what their advantages are and where they fall short to help you decide whether or not you can save some money and get a digital setup or if it's better for you to save up for an analog tube. The PVS14 is a little bit heavier and there's a slight weight savings with the MVG50, but if you decide to run the wide angle lens mod, the weight between the two setups is about the same. The bodies are actually made of a very similar feeling polymer, which speaks to the improved build quality on the MVG50. The PVS14 is powered by a single AA battery and the runtime on this device with no IR lighting is said to be around 50 hours. And while digital is getting better, your runtime ranges on the MVG30 on its dual 18350s is gonna be closer to six to eight Eight hours but you can extend the runtime with external battery packs and there are a few different options you can go with another benefit to the pvs 14 is the availability of mounting systems and accessories but at the moment you are pretty limited with the mg 50s included single monocular mount or the wild game plus bridge for running a bino and unfortunately i'm unaware of any wilcox compatible setups for the mg 50 at the moment compatibility with wilcox systems is the biggest advantage that the mg 30 has over the mg 50 and if you want to see a video on how the 50 compares to the 30 you can check out that link too down below one cool thing you can do with the mvg 50 is record video directly to the device with a micro sd card but one thing i found is that the onboard recording doesn't quite do the mvg 50's low light performance justice because it doesn't capture as much light and it's darker than the image that you'd see looking through the device itself let's take a look through each of these devices to get a better idea of the user experience and the following videos and still photos were taken using a google pixel 7 smartphone for the sake of making the comparison as fair as possible. The PVS14 does have a wider and taller circular field of view and as you can see it's pretty much crystal clear perfect vision and there's no doubt that this is incredible and it is superior. The MVG50's digital display is an ultra crisp OLED 2560 by 1440 display which is an upgrade from the MVG30's OLED 1920 by 1080 display. You can see the advantage in the field of view goes to the PVS14 but when we attach the wide angle lens mod a little later on in the video you'll see that it really does bridge the gap and the field of views are much more similar. There are a few advantages to the MVG50 including a working digital compass that's usually pretty accurate to within 10 to 20 degrees, an optional reticle, and one of my favorites digital zoom with a maximum of four times magnification on the MVG50 which you can use to identify targets at much further ranges compared to analog which definitely puts digital at an advantage over analog for longer range applications but with its wider field of view and circular view there's no doubt that a PVS14 is better for short range tasks involving rapid movement and navigation. Recording night vision through the smartphone does create a little bit more distortion around the edges and it's difficult to focus so the real life clarity is much sharper on both of these devices particularly with the MVG50 and again the experience looking through the MVG50 is much brighter and you'll be able to pick up more in lower light areas. Another photo I wanted to show you really quick includes these two we just looked at and also adds a Gen 2 Plus analog tube, an MVG30, an ADNV G4 14SE, which is a really nice digital night vision unit that's about three times as expensive as the MVG50, a Night Operators Max 2.0, and also a Night Fox Prowl, which are both priced around $200. And as you can see, both of those two lower price units are really struggling here, and you would definitely need supplemental IR lighting to be able to see anything with them under these conditions. The G14SE, the MVG50, and the MVG30 are all going to keep up quite well with analog tubes, so long as there's at least a little bit of moonlight to work with, and the G14 
G14SE is running at 100 frames per second, so it's very impressive that it's able to keep up with low light performance of similar devices running at significantly slower frame rates. We're going to decrease the moonlight exposure in the next shot, which is taken in an area with a dense tree canopy, and most of the moonlight is blocked from reaching the ground and the trees. And now we can see that the MVG50 is really struggling to keep up here, and this image is a bit out of focus, so the real life performance would be a little bit sharper. The G14SE digital unit is in the center, and it does allow you to see a little bit more than the MVG50, but with the analog tube, you are able to see the best. So in these types of conditions, you will definitely start to notice the advantages of analog if you don't want to run any IR lighting. Another very important point of comparison is field of view, which is basically a combination of how wide and tall the viewing area is. To demonstrate this, we've got the MVG50 with the stock lens on top left, the MVG50 with the wide angle lens mod attachment beneath that, and the PVS14 on the right. The field of view of the stock MVG50 is approximately 40 to 45 degrees, and we do notice that the PVS14 does offer significantly more height and width, which definitely gives it an advantage in tasks relating to navigation. The wide angle lens mod for the MVG50 provides an incredible boost to the field of view, and it's even wider compared to the PVS14 and only slightly less tall. And this is one of the best upgrades for the MVG50, and it makes the user experience closer to analog, which I find to be worth the extra weight of the lens mod, especially for a single monocular setup. In environments where mixed or ambient lighting is present, we do start to notice a slight advantage shift towards the MVG50 in a few instances. When we're looking directly into light sources, there is less glare on the MVG50 compared to the analog PVS14, and as a result, you can see a bit better when staring towards light sources with digital compared to analog. So if you plan to operate in cities, this might be worth keeping in mind. Also, the color viewing mode on the MVG50 does provide more contrast and it makes it easier to identify what you're looking at in settings like these, which is also a nice advantage. Latency has always been an issue unique to digital units, including the MVG50, but they are catching up and closing the gap. And at this point in time, the issue is very minimal. A few weeks ago, I brought out two MVG50s configured together as a bino and rode around on an e-bike and they work surprisingly well. And if you want to check out that video, I'll leave a link down in the description. A lot of people have mentioned that both the MVG50 and the MVG30 are fast enough to be used for tasks involving rapid movements with only a slight advantage going to analog in this department. And the MVG50 does have less latency compared to other digital night vision units in its price range. Now we're going to dive into my thoughts on who these devices are a good fit for. There's no question that analog night vision offers superior performance in most categories, but with price being such a huge factor, the performance of digital isn't far behind and is very useful for many different applications. And of course, it's much better than the human eye even without IR lighting. For those of you who are not concerned about running an IR signature, digital is definitely the way to go. Whether you want to include night vision as part of your home defense or for your property surveillance, a digital unit is going to be more than sufficient. Your time spent doing outdoor sports like hunting, hiking, fishing, boating, and even stargazing will absolutely benefit from a digital night vision setup. For airsofting and shooting sports where you don't want to run an IR signature, or perhaps you want to run a rail mounted IR solution, there's no doubt that a digital unit like the AMBG 50 will put you at a huge advantage so long as there's a little bit of moonlight or ambient lighting to work with and it's a great entry-level option for those of you looking to get into night vision but who can't afford a PVS14. A ton of people are using digital units like these in airsoft games and milsim events. They're being used for target shooting and even being evaluated for use in night vision shooting classes and they're a great gateway into these activities for the average person. And unless you're really well trained you won't notice much difference between digital and analog setups. In situations where you might be putting your life on the line there's no doubt that analog would be preferred. In life or death situations, having an analog unit will allow you to react a few hundredths of a second faster, which could make a huge difference in a gunfight, especially if the people you're up against are also running analog night vision. However, at longer ranges, the gap between analog and digital would be less noticeable, and there might even be a slight advantage to digital for longer range detection purposes. People who are really involved with shooting would probably want to have the capabilities of a PVS-14 at some point down the line, but getting into digital can be a great way to train and get some experience. And when you do finally save up to get some analogs, you'll have a good backup or a loaner unit you can hand over to a friend. In these kinds of life or death situations, you would definitely be better off having digital going up against people with no night vision of any kind. However, the average person who is into shooting and looking to add some night vision to their kit, digital units are now at a place where they can perform at a very respectable level and would be very useful for many people. Let us know your thoughts on digital night vision versus analog in the comments below. Thanks for watching and if you want to check out the MVG50 
HE50, you can use the links down in the description below.